Hey everyone, it's Terry. Cheerleader James here. I'm excited to share something with you today that's actually going to cheer you on to live your dreams. And it's something I stole from my dad, Jerry Savelle. <laughs> Literally stole his notes called Seven Indicators You Have a Dream from God. I'm going to share straight from the book. I titled it Seven Indicators Successful People Use to validate their dreams. I know it's gonna help you. But first I wanted to say while we're getting on, I just saw someone named Razia from Cape Town. I'm coming your way. That's what I wanted to say. I'm gonna be in South Africa this month in Johannesburg. Is it March 23rd, 24th? I think it is. Yes, and I'm gonna be in Paris, France. So if any of my French friends are watching, or you're near France, I am gonna be speaking at a women's conference in Paris, France on March the 17th. That's this month. So I wanted to mention Paris, Johannesburg. We're gonna have um, icing Washington DC in June. Um, trying to think, I think it's April or May, I'll be in Minnesota again, Detroit, Michigan, St. Louis, Missouri. So anyway, Check the website, terry.com, because I love getting to see you in person, give you a hug. If you're in France, I'll give you a little bijou bijou. <laughs> I don't know what we do in South Africa. Jumble. I don't know, but I'm excited to give you a hug and just get to see you face to face. So I want to say thank you so much for being with me today. And thank you, thank you, thank you from my heart for the response to the new book, The Alone Advantage. I have never had this kind of response from a book ever in my life. You know, I don't know if you saw the story last week, but that was a week ago on Wednesday, Wednesday, tomorrow. Uh, my husband and I went to Barnes and Noble here in the Dallas area, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a moment. I'm gonna get a picture at the store holding the book. So we go in Barnes and Noble and it's not on the shelf. And Roddy and I are looking under A, B, C, D, E, F, not there. We look under S for Savelle, not there. First thought was, oh man, they didn't carry the book here. And it was so discouraging. So I said, well, Rodney, go ask for it. So they feel like there's a demand for our books. <laughs> Just go say, do you have Terry Savelle books here? So he went and asked and the lady looked it up on the computer and she said, no, we sold out. Then she looked at another store. I don't know Stonebriar where that is, but she looked it up sold out. Then she said, I found one in Frisco, Texas. So Rodney came back and told me this. And I was like, are you sure? So I got my phone out and had him, you know, say that to me. So that was a dream. You know, yes, I wanted to get a picture at the bookstore, but it's even better for them to say it's sold out. And then my husband, he was posting about it, you know, and one of his friends messaged and said, yeah, we went to the bookstore in Detroit or yeah, Detroit, Michigan, and it was sold out. So I don't know if I'm dreaming this or what, but I just want to say thank you because you're the ones making this possible. And this book is such a testimony to never give up on your dreams. Um, and I want to say real quick, I know it's not like Joyce Meyer and Michael Todd levels. We're not selling millions of books right now, but I will say this. I checked today and we are still on the Amazon bestsellers list. Number one in Christian business and professional growth. And that makes me so happy because um, you've heard the story when the publisher turned us down and everything, but then another publisher came back. Well, the reason they approached me was because they said, we're looking for a woman, a Christian woman, a Christian woman teaching success from God's word. So to be number one in Christian business and professional growth, that is encouraging. So then not only that, but this morning I checked and we went from number three to number one on the audio book. So that's good. I don't know. I guess some people like this voice, but hey, I'm so grateful. So I want you to know that I don't take this lightly. It is because of the favor of God and because of you supporting this and investing in yourself, you've made this possible. Um, I've seen some of the reviews here. And if you haven't bought the book, I want you to just hear kind of what people are saying, because it may help you get an idea of what the book is about, because I can tell you all day long. But this precious guy, Jareth, he follows me on Instagram. So I see him and he said, um, this new book is a blessing. He said, I'm loving every word, page, punctuation, etc." He said, I have the physical book, the ebook and the audio book. <laughs> That's a lot of Terry. But 
he says he's tapping into every way possible to get the opportunity to read it and to listen. And it's a huge inspiration. Thank you, Jareth. Dory said, I'm so glad I discovered you on YouTube a month ago. Right on time to be excited to get the book. I've already listened to the whole thing and purchased three extra copies to share with others. Dory, that blesses me so much. You know, every time my friends come out with a book, I never buy just one. I always buy more than one so that I can buy one for me and then sew one. So Dory is harvest. She is part of my seed zone for her to do that. And I appreciate that, Dory. Kathy said, uh, one of the best books I've read on the topic of morning routines and time management. So if you're looking for something to help you get your time under control, to be able to manage your schedule, there's a whole section on that um, and morning routines. So Kathy, you nailed it. Um, Marie said, this is a book for those who are ready to take action to become a better version of themselves. Terry's a walking billboard of what she teaches. I appreciate that, Maurice. He sounds like a writer. Um, Terry's spoken to 22,000 at our business conference, and she knows what she's talking about. Another powerful tool to become a better version of me. So I appreciate that because it is a book about personal development, all based on God's word. And then Aaliyah said, I've read several Terry's books and I listened to her YouTube messages, but this is the best of all her tips and perspectives in one book. Reading this book, is an advantage to someone who's in an aggressive pursuit of achieving their dreams. I love that because that's seriously what the publisher asked me to do was to put kind of the best of, of our messages into one. So that's exactly what you're saying. And that blesses my heart so much. So I wanted to just ask you um, in the comments here, I'm curious if you've started the book, what you're enjoying, like, is there a certain section that you're liking more than others or which chapter are you on? I'm looking at the comments right here. Um, Nashville's here. Hey, and I met you, TTJ Golden. That's awesome. Were we at IC Nashville? I don't know, but I love seeing all your comments, but I'm curious if you're on a certain chapter, what are you reading? Is it the, every part ends with the word up. So it's like, wake up, grow up, speak up, cheer up, step up. So I'm, one of them's clean up. I'm curious which ones you're on. And I will look at it in just a second. But I did see this. I got the audio book and love the smile in your voice. <laughs> Merci pour le livre. Thank you. I appreciate that. From France. I hope I see you next couple of weeks. Okay, so I wanted to ask you for a favor. Um, if you haven't gotten the book, I would love for you to get a copy for yourself. You know, you can go to Amazon or Barnes and Noble, wherever you like to get books, or you can click the link, thealoneadvantage.com. Get the book, but also when you get the book or if you already have the book, would you send a picture of you with the book? Maybe you don't show your face, but I love seeing your faces and seeing who's reading the book. Maybe just a shot, you know like that with a pom-pom behind it, something. I don't care. I just want to see your books. If you'll tag me um, on Instagram, that way I can find you because I love seeing them. I've been reposting some of them. And then the third favor is would you leave a review? I didn't realize how important the reviews are, but the publisher says they're very important. The only thing I really know about reviews is my husband. That's how he picks restaurants. That's how he picks pretty much everything, doesn't he? He looks at the reviews. So if you don't mind, I know it's it's a time thing, but if you don't mind, if you would leave a review and hopefully a good review, I would appreciate that so much. And I know it means a lot to the publisher and it does help people decide if they want it or not. So thank you for doing that. I hate asking so much, but I do want to share with you the seven indicators you have a dream from God. Are you ready? Like I said, I stole this from my favorite preacher, Jerry Savelle, years ago. My dad and I were doing a TV show together and sometimes he wouldn't even tell me what we were going to talk about. We would just get on the set, which is not easy for someone like me who's a planner. But he said, we're going to talk about the seven indicators you have a dream from God. And I was like, what? I want to know what they are. So I said, Daddy, can I have your notes? So I stole his notes and I put that in the book. Of course, a little, a little touch of me is added to each part. But I believe this is going to help you so much. 
to realize whether or not your dream is from God or if you're just making it up or if you should give up on this dream. This is going to help you so much because it's helped me so much. So first of all, I want to say this. I love how Michael Todd said, when God gives you a dream, don't treat it as a cheap suggestion. Isn't that powerful? Don't treat it as a cheap suggestion. In other words, he's counting on you. So this is chapter 14 from the book. If you've got the book and you want to follow along, but Miles Monroe said this, he said, you can tell when a vision is from God because it makes you look like a fool. I mean, that right there is enough validation that you probably got the right dream. He said, if people believe you the first time you tell them, it's probably not from God. Isn't that interesting? And then he, he compared the story of Joseph when he told his brothers his big dream and they, you know, threw him into a pit and sold him into slavery. And he said, don't you know Joseph was just sitting there thinking to himself, this is not what I saw. Miles Monroe said this, if what you see is not what you saw, it's temporary. Think about that. If what you see with your eyes today is not what you saw in your spirit yesterday, it's temporary. Hang on to that dream. Don't give up on it, right? So here's the seven indicators. Number one is if it captures your imagination. It captures your imagination. I want you to remember that your imagination is a gift from God. I talked about that last week if you were with me. And I was talking about how even Albert Einstein said, your imagination is everything. He said it's simply a preview of life's coming attractions. In other words, God doesn't show you the whole film. He just shows you a little snapshot, a preview of what's possible for you. So if it captures your imagination, in other words, you can see this dream happening on the inside, even though it just looks impossible on the outside. So in the book, I, there's the scripture I put, 2 Corinthians 4.18, that says, so we fix our eyes on what, on, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. In other words, you dream about it when you're awake. You can't get it out of your mind. So I told the story in this part about a beautiful young woman with a thick country accent who grew up in the foothills of Tennessee. She said her father never learned to read or write. She was one of 12 children from a very poor family. And here's what she said she would do. She would get an old tin can with a stick and she would jab it into the tin can like this. And she would stand on this little porch of their cabin. And she said she would pretend that this was her microphone. <laughs> Like this. This was her microphone. She said she'd look out in the yard at the chickens and she would pretend that was her audience. She would look down at her old raggedy clothes and just imagine she was wearing rhinestones with sequins. She said she would close her eyes and just imagine holding her guitar, singing to thousands of people. Well, that little girl with an amazing imagination grew up to be Dolly Parton. So my point in that story is you have to see it on the inside before it shows up on the outside. So if it captures your imagination, you got the right dream. Okay, number two is if it seems impossible. If your dreams are possible, you're not dreaming big enough. If your dreams are possible, you're not dreaming big enough. Here's the thing. If it were possible for you to achieve your dream, it wouldn't require faith. And doesn't the Bible say it's impossible to please God without faith? So see, God wants the glory for this dream. It's just like this book. I could not make this possible on my own. No matter how hard I tried to pitch it to a publisher, God is the one who had to make it happen. So if your dreams feel like, I don't know how to do this. I can't make this happen. Listen to what scripture says. What is impossible with man is possible with God. God wants you so dependent on him. In fact, listen to this story I told about impossible dreams. Now, this was about um, a young man growing up in a family with limited income in Memphis, Tennessee. He enlisted in the Air Force to pursue his dream of becoming a fighter pilot. Once he'd served for four years, he headed to L.A. to try a different career, acting. Sadly, it didn't work out. Next, the young man relocated to New York City for another attempt at getting his acting career off the ground. But this time, things went so bad that he found himself on the streets living on stale donuts. True story. Years went by with no success in the industry. 
but he was able to rent an apartment and find various jobs to pay the bills. He still would not give up on his dream, even at age 45. Finally, five years later, when he was 50 years old, this man saw his hard work pay off when he began getting bigger roles in popular movies. Driving Miss Daisy was one of them. Today, he's an Academy Award winner with a voice that's even more recognizable than his looks, and that was Morgan Freeman. Is that amazing? You know, I put so many stories in here of people like Dolly Parton, Morgan Freeman, uh, Shania Twain, different ones, to just give you encouragement that you're not an isolated case. See, the devil wants you to think that you're the only person having to fight this hard or you must not have heard from God or it would be a lot easier. You have to fight for your dreams. So let these be indicators. Oh my goodness, if Morgan Freeman had to fight that hard, I can do this, right? Okay, so number three, are y'all getting all these points? Number two was, if it seems impossible. Number three, it seems as though it will never come to pass. I hope this encourages you because me looking at this book, this dream for seven years, it seemed as though it would never come to pass. But here's what my dad, Jerry Savelle says. He says, when you feel like giving up the most, that's always an indication your breakthrough is just about to happen. Don't give up. Think about those words. When you feel like giving up the most, that's an indication your dream is about to happen. You know, Thomas Edison, got my light bulb right here. Thomas Edison is the one who said, most of life's failures are those who didn't realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Think about these words. They were just on the verge of the, the breakthrough, but they gave up right before it. And I've heard that told like in different ways from so many successful people. So in other words, God's timing is always right. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows exactly when your dream is gonna manifest. You know, I heard Joel Osteen say this. He said, if God hasn't changed your situation yet, he's using the situation to change you. So be patient, it's coming, his timing is perfect, right? Okay, number four is not everyone is as enthusiastic about it as you are. Not everyone is as enthusiastic about it as you are. So here's what helps me, because you know, when I think about my dreams and even just doing what I'm doing today, I didn't have anybody speaking into me saying, Terry, I feel like you're called to minister, or Terry, I think you're gonna write books one day. No, I had to realize that God hasn't necessarily told them what he's told me about my future. Hang on to that. Don't get mad at the people around you because they're not cheering you on and going, you can do this. Oh my gosh, I can totally see you doing this. No, God hasn't necessarily told them what he's told you about your dreams. So you have to learn to become your own cheerleader. How do you do that? Well, I don't have time to teach on it today, but in the section that I called Speak Up, this is um, part seven, it's called Speak Up, and it's all about becoming your own cheerleader. How do you do that? With the words of your mouth. You change your words, and of course it changes your world, right? So I had to make a list of positive declarations to speak over myself, and you will too. And I would speak these out over and over and over behind the scenes with nobody watching saying things like, I declare in the name of Jesus, I am highly favored of God. My gift is going before me and bringing me before great people. I have the grace of God to help me accomplish my dreams. I'm highly proactive. I'm courageous in the pursuit of my dreams. I'm sensitive to God's timing on my life. I take bold steps of faith. I'm expecting breakthroughs in my life. I mean, just going down the list day after day after day. Well, your voice is the most influential voice in your life. So if everyone is not cheering you on, become your own cheerleader, cheer yourself on, right? Okay, number five, are y'all doing good? I'm trying to see the comments here. Oh good, so my team's putting the points in here so you're catching all of them. Okay, number five is if you have experienced resistance, difficulty, setbacks, and frustration. Can we all say a big amen on that one, right? You've experienced resistance, difficulty, setbacks, and frustration. Listen to this scripture. 
Psalm 27, 14 says, stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. I'll say it again. Stay with God. You know, I can't help but think of the story I told in this book was about a guy named Milton. You talk about experiencing frustration, difficulty, resistance, and all that. I'm just going to read this story to you because it's so encouraging. Because, you know, sometimes you look at people and you just assume that they just rolled out of bed, made a vision board, and their dreams just happened. Everybody has to fight for their dreams. So listen to Milton. It says that um, he pursued his dream against all odds. He dropped out of school in the fourth grade. Later in life, he took an apprenticeship with a printing company only to get fired. That letdown led to him becoming an apprentice to a candy maker. After studying the business for four years, he developed a big vision to start his own candy company, and he went for it. Milton started a candy company in Philadelphia. Unfortunately, it failed miserably. He picked himself up and went full force after his dream in Chicago. Again, a devastating failure. Can you imagine having to shut up shop and move on to the next thing? Once again, he didn't let the severe setback stop him. He started another candy company in New York, only to watch it go down. Undeterred, Milton founded the Lancaster Caramel Company. He did it, right? Well, his unique caramel recipe was a huge success. However, Milton believed that chocolate had a greater future than caramel. <laughs> he said the Lanc he sold the Lancaster Caramel Company to an equivalent in, now to, in today's money of $25 million. And he started what he called the Hershey Company. Can we say thank you, Jesus, that he did not give up, right? He stayed stuck to his vision, right? And of course, we get to enjoy the sweetness of his success. But if Milton had given up on his dreams, we'd probably never know his name. Think about that. His very name, Hershey, is synonymous with chocolate, isn't it? So my point is, if God put a dream in your heart, he has every intention of bringing it to pass. But your job is to stay focused, stay faithful, stay persistent. Don't give up. Fight for your dream, right? Just like me with the new book, seven years of fighting for that dream. Okay, number six, it consumes your thinking. If it seems to consume your thinking. So I told the story of Catherine Stockett and how it took her five years to get her book published. Um, her manuscript was rejected 60 times. See, when I read stuff like that, I go, Terry, come on. You had a rejection. Catherine Stockett had 60 rejections. I don't know about you, but that encourages me. Gives me hope, right? Despite being told by one publisher, there's no market for this kind of tiring writing. She refused to give up and just kept writing. Her persistence and her work ethic were rewarded when her book was finally published and her words became famous. Tell me if you've heard this before. You is smart, you is kind, you is important. <laughs> that was Catherine Stockett who wrote the book, The Help, which was turned into a movie and listen to this, The Help was on the New York Times bestsellers list for more than 100 weeks. We're not on the Times, okay? <laughs> she was on for 100 weeks. Bottom line, if you can't stop thinking about it, don't stop working for it. What if she'd given up? Look at the success she would have missed out on. Okay, number seven. I hope this is encouraging, y'all. Are they encouraged? Okay, good, because I can't wait to see all these comments in here. Okay, number seven. Let me see. What does that say? Something. I can't really read it. But it says, I need to get my hands on this book. Please bring tools. Oh, to South Africa. I can't wait to see you this month. Okay. Number seven is if it seems to define and shape your life. If it seems to define and shape your life, what does that mean? What you're able to do, God wants you to do. Here's what I discovered is that there is a connection between your potential, your passion, and your purpose. It's all connected. What you're able to do, God wants you to do. Certain gifts and talents that you have that are so unique to you. Usually our gifts are things that come so natural to us, we don't even think of them as gifts. But God wants to use it in a powerful way. So what you're able to do, God wants you to do. So 
I'm saying in this part that I want your dream to be so big and for you to have so much enthusiasm that nobody can talk you out of it. Nobody can convince you to give up on this dream. So I want you to listen to this poem. It's not in this chapter. It's actually on page 210. No, it's actually 201. And this was a poem that my pastor, Keith Kraft, wrote. And it's so encouraging because it just makes you realize that you have a decision to make. You get to make the choice. And he called this poem, Choose Your Heart. And this is in the section where I'm encouraging you to start preparing for your dream. So this is the alone advantage because everything is behind the scenes. You're doing this behind the scenes. Nobody's watching but you and God. So listen to this. Here's what Keith Craft says. Being your best is hard. Being your normal is hard. Making wise decisions is hard. Making bad decisions is hard. Being in shape is hard. Being out of shape is hard. <laughs> Losing weight is hard. Being fat is hard. Working out is hard. Being weak is hard. Being disciplined is hard. Being lazy is hard. Getting out of your comfort zone is hard. Staying in your comfort zone is hard. Starting a business is hard. Working for someone else is hard. Making a lot of money is hard. Making a little bit of money is hard. Being rich is hard. Being poor is hard. Having great relationships is hard. Having bad relationships is hard. Fighting for your marriage is hard. Divorce is hard. Having a lot of things is hard. Having nothing is hard. Living on purpose is hard. Living off purpose is hard. Doing life God's way is hard. Doing life your own way is hard. Everything is hard. Choose your heart. Isn't that good? Because it just helps you see that you have a choice. They're both going to be hard, but you're going to get more benefits if you choose the right heart, right? If you choose the thing that God's put in your heart to do. So my encouragement for you is that if God put a dream in your heart, like I said, he has every intention of bringing it to pass, but it's through faith and patience. So you got to fight for the dream. You got to stay focused on the dream. And how you stay focused is you build yourself up in private behind closed doors with nobody watching. Because see, God can't use you publicly until you get victory privately. So I want to encourage you today, if you haven't gotten the alone advantage, get this book because I'm telling you, this is where you're going to develop that faith, that determination, that persistence that you cannot be talked out of the dream God put in your heart. So I call it 10 behind the scenes habits that drive crazy success. So I would be honored to share these tips with you because this is how God transformed a shy, insecure, pathetic, easily controlled person into being who God's made me today. Strong, confident, courageous, living my dreams, right? So I want to encourage you to get your copy right now. We'll put the link right there, thealoneadvantage.com, or go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever you like to buy books. Get your copy, and please, when you get a copy, send me a picture on Instagram. Be sure to tag me in it so I can see it, because I like to repost them. I like to see them, and every year I make a little scrapbook up here, and I want to put all your little pictures in the scrapbook. So send me a picture when you get your book. I would love to see your beautiful face. If you don't want to show me your face, still send me a picture in a cool setting or whatever. And if you don't mind, please leave us a review, hopefully a good one, so that we can um, get this book out to more people. So I hope this encouraged you today, and I hope you know that I am cheering you on to live your dreams. Thank you for being with me.